And now I would be talking to you about my experience of using the Mirante, some of its uh, wide field and multimodal imaging, as well as a bit about the functional analysis importance of micro perimeter uh, in some of the situations. Let me share my screen. These are my co-authors, and I would like to acknowledge them at this point of time. So Mirante, the most important thing that, uh, that attracts me to it is the four lasers, which kind of give you the colors in a white field or a normal color image that we see. The most true colors that I've seen with an SLO-based imaging is with Mirante, and you can appreciate almost natural looking uh, images coming out of it. And even in the wide field, it's a great screening tool to do uh, color photographs in, in patients of uh, various type of pathologies. And you do an angiography, uh, whether in the central mode or in a wide field mode, you can see them. And the other part is that if you look at a regular fundus image of a patient who comes to you with uh, decreased vision, uh, you may think it is normal. These images are taken by a regular fundus camera. And I'm comparing them now with the same patient's image taken on a Mirante, and you can instantly make out uh, the resolution, the kind of texture of the, of the macula which is there. Uh, it tells you that there is something abnormal on the macula. Uh, this is the other eye of the same patient, and you can make out the same thing with this SLO-based Mirante image. And now when you do the autofluorescence, you can make out that there is a, a bullseye-like phenomenon with the dystrophy probably uh, uh, there. So with the Mirante uh, color photographs, you could instantly make out, which is much more difficult with the uh, regular fundus cameras. This is the OCT of the same patient confirming the thinning of the fovea uh, in the patient that I just showed you. Some other examples of, of macular area, you see a macular hole, a scar, a subretinal membrane, a CSR, all of them depicting in, in fairly normal colors, resolutions. And this is an optic nerve fit. Uh, you can see the pit in the disc as well as the elevation from the papillomacular bundle towards the macula. And when you do the OCT, uh, a long scan of the OCT, 16 millimeter, you can see uh, from the disc nasally as well as towards the whole temporal part how the elevation uh, with the optic nerve pit uh, in the central serous retinopathy along with it uh, is there. This is a patient of a lens drop, and you can see the white field. Uh, image of the lens lying at the bottom uh, in, in the patient. A patient came to us with an RP rip. He was being treated for AMD with multiple injections. And you can see that uh, when this patient comes to us and we, you can see the, the area from where the rip is passing. And when you do the OCT, you can actually make out exactly the area where the arrow is, where the rip is uh, happening in that patient. And of course, the angiography confirms uh, the whole dark area is where the RP has ripped off from, from that region and is clearly demarcated. This is a patient who underwent extensive PRP uh, uh, somewhere and had come to us for a second opinion. You can see a freshly lasered um, uh, diabetic retinopathy who formed choroidals. And look at the whole white field image, uh, all 360 degrees with the choroidals and the recently done laser in this patient. And when we do an angiography, uh, you can appreciate the wide field uh, view of the same. A patient with extensive peripheral CNP areas, sclerosed vessels, and you can appreciate the FA showing you uh, very well demarcated CNP areas uh, using the Mirante. And then, of course, when we use ICG, this is a normal um, ICG in a patient. You can see clearly the whole vasculature of the choroid, and you, you can do a montage, a still wider field, uh, putting together these images. And the, it's most useful in conditions like choroiditis, where you can see the extent of where the lesions extend in the peripheral areas apart from the macular area. And uh, look at the extent here uh, when you do a montage of these white field images uh, of the active areas. Retro mode is another aspect which you've already seen in some of the talks before. It gives these beautiful lunar like crater images of any elevations. Most of the time, the drusens stand out uh, quite clearly uh, in, in these patients and give you very impressive pictures uh, with the same. We had a patient of presumed tenofovir toxicity, which had very subtle 
uh, macular changes, but uh, when you do the FA, you can see how well demarcated the whole uh, deposits uh, look like in the patient, as well as the OCT showing you uh, stippling uh, uh, in, in the region as well to confirm the diagnosis. The other impressive part of Mirante is that it can go through very small pupils. You can see here the size of the pupil and this patient has exudative RDs, which we can see very easily through the Mirante's imaging. And we can also do an angiography and confirm the same. This is a patient with small pupils, difficult to see clinically, and we can now see a subretinal blood, uh, which is there, which is uh, because of a subretinal membrane. And so by doing this, we could diagnose and treat the patient with anti -VEGF. A patient with small pupils, uveitis, and we can confirm a cystoid macular edema using the Mirante a color photo as well as the OCT, uh, which we can very clearly see in this patient. Also, in patients of keratoprosthesis, where clinically looking at the fundus is extremely difficult, the patient uh, had come to us with decreased vision, we could not see clinically, but the Mirante could get us a nice image and also an elevation which suggested cystoid edema. We gave the patient uh, can accord and it improved. Now I go on to a, a, a brief uh, uh, aspect of microperimetry, a structure function correlation in wet AMD using OCT angiography and microperimetry. Uh, and these are my co authors for this particular part uh, of the talk. Uh, wet AMD consists of abnormal blood vessels under the macula, as you know, that uh, uh, we can make out on the OCT angiography these networks. Uh, which tell us and confirm the presence of an active network. And we aim here to correlate the functional treatment response using microperimetry with the morphological findings of OCT on wet AMD. So you can see a network of vasculature and the fovea, and we do a microperimetry in the same region. And all the red that you see is, is where the uh, activity of the fluid is, uh, is, is uh, got a threshold which is different, the red color one has uh, lower sensitivity as compared to the yellow and the green. So what we did was uh, we treated uh, uh, patients with three injections uh, at multi monthly intervals and then PRN. And these were compared uh, uh, using the OCTA along with the microperimeter. And you can see here that this case has a network. Uh, we started the anti vegfs and after a month, you can see that the microperimetry improves along with the OCT and geography. Uh, after three months, you can see the network has almost disappeared on the OCTA and the microperimetry is almost becoming yellow to green in that region. This is another case depicting the same. You can see the network and you can see an extensive fluid uh, at the baseline. And once you start treating, you can see that the, the red colored hue, which is the sensitivity, keeps getting better with the yellow green colors after the injection starts and it keeps on improving at the third month. This is another case. Uh, again, this has a, a much lesser fluid amount. You can see that it's not red, and it, the sensitivity numbers get better uh, after a month and three months of the injection. So, of course, the lesser, uh, if the patient is good to begin with, he will still improve to get much better than the cases that I showed you earlier. And then this is a case, again, we start treating the patient uh, confirmed on the OCTA with a network after three months improves. And then after six months comes back with a recurrence. So you can compare the OCTA uh, activity has also come back again. And then you can see uh, how the activity on the uh, macula has come back also. So to conclude, basically, uh, these two tools can be very easily correlated in terms of a morphology. Uh, of the OCTA to the functional change that the NT3 uh, brings in and provides new insight into the pathogenesis, prognosis, and the progression of the case. And is also a, a nice non-invasive way to follow up these patients while, while treating them. So uh, thank you very much for patient hearing, and I look forward to um, uh, a question and answer session.